Hello, this is Joseph Trust. This is going to be a quick tutorial covering how to use the Nano Tile Textures plugin that I wrote for ZBrush here to create a quick tiling nylon texture. So here I just have the actual completed texture loaded in, and this is actually just on a simple plain 3D object. And I just have one of the passes, the BPR pass, loaded on this plane here. Now this texture does seamlessly repeat. So if I come over here to the UV map tab here and say change this to like two by two, you can see that it's still tiling and there is no uh, seams being generated on this actual map here. And I have a few of these guys that you can come through and generate passes for. So you can generate height maps, uh, you can generate the preview, uh, AO maps, the actual polygroup ID, and then the BPR ones. So we have a whole bunch of kind of uh, map generation process you can do here and this plugin will allow you to use the nano mesh functionality to generate these repeating textures that you can then use inside a ZBrush or export out to other programs as needed. So to start off I just have a simple poly mesh 3D star here and I'm in actual edit mode. Now I want to switch to a cylinder object to kind of generate my initial nano mesh object. So I'm going to come over here and just select this poly mesh 3D star, which will open up the quick pick menu, and then I'm going to select the cylinder 3D object. Now with this object selected, I need to turn this into a poly mesh. So I'm going to come over to the tool palette and just click make poly mesh 3D. So now if I turn my polyframes on, you can see that this is what the cylinder looks like. So I have a varying degree of uh, resolution on this guy here. And now I want to switch to the Z Modeler brush because I want to actually deform this mesh a little bit to generate a nano mesh that kind of looks like threaded string. So I'm going to come over to the brush menu over here and click on that and then locate the actual Z Modeler brush. So coming over here and finding the Z Modeler brush. You can also use the brush hotkeys inside of ZBrush. So if I hit B on my keyboard to open up the brush menu, I can then isolate by the letter Z and then I can press M to select the Z Modeler brush that way as well. Now with the Z Modeler brush selected, I'm just going to hover over my mesh here and just find an edge and hover over that. And then I'm going to press spacebar to open up the Z Modeler edge action menu. Now in here, you have a whole bunch of actions and then you have targets and modifiers that will come up below. I want to select this polygroup action first. I'm going to come over here and just click that. And then I make sure that polygroup action is selected. The target by default is polyloop. And then I'm going to keep this modifier as overwrite. Returning back to my model, I'm just going to hover over an edge and then just click to apply that polygroup action to that actual edge loop. And I'm just going to go through and polygroup every other row on the mesh here. Now after this is set, I'm now going to hover over one of these polygroups here. So I'm going to hover over this polygroup here. And I'm going to hold spacebar again, go back into the ZModeler menu. And now I'm going to make sure I have the QMesh action selected. I'm going to change my target to polygroup all. And I'm going to return back and then just simply click on any polygroup here and drag out and create an effect like this. So I'm just basically Q meshing those poly loops out to give me a mesh that looks like this. Now, after this has been generated, I'm now going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to go over to the geometry tab here and I'm just going to divide it up with SMT active. So this is giving me kind of this thread like appearance to this actual model here. Next thing I want to do is just kind of elongate this shape a little bit so it's not so spherical. So I'm going to come up to the top and select the move transpose line. And then I'm just going to drag this out like so, so it's horizontal on the canvas. And then I'm just going to click the inner circle right here and kind of pull that out to turn it into more of an oval type shape. So something just like that. Then I'm going to go back to draw mode and just kind of frame my mesh up like this, and I'm going to switch to the damn standard brush, so I'm going to hit B on my keyboard, isolate by letter D, and then hit S for the damn standard brush. Now I'm going to come up here and just change this to Z add, I like the damn standard brush to add without me pressing alt. And so I'm going to come through and just rough this shape up, because right now it's a little bit too even, so I'm going to come through and just draw on this model here. I'm just going to do some quick strokes, I'm going to hold alt and do this as well, to just kind of carve a little more surfaces into here, so it's not as even. So it looks like it started directly from an actual cylinder. So something like this. A little roughen up here. Make it a little more look like string or twine or whatever else. Get these edges to So there we go. It looks pretty good. Hit these areas just a little bit. So that looks pretty good for our thread kind of detailing. 
So now I need to turn this into an insert mesh object and then turn it into a nano mesh. To do that, I want to make sure I have perspective turned off. And then I'm going to come up to the brush menu up here. And I'm going to scroll to right here and click create insert mesh. Now after this um, insert mesh is created, I now just have an insert mesh brush. Now I need to turn this insert mesh brush into an actual nano mesh. So I'm come to the brush menu again and I'm going to click create nano mesh brush. Now I have a Z modeler brush with this object stored as an actual nano mesh. So now I can start applying this to a plane and create a tiling texture from it. So now I want to come up and activate the nano tile texture plugin. So usually it lives up here under Z plugins and then you have a nice nano tile textures. I've just taken this here and just docked it over to the side so now it's living over here. This just allows me to get to this a little bit quicker rather than coming up here and clicking this Z plugin uh, palette every time. So this is why it's over here on the side of my screen. So I'm just going to make sure uh, I have a line set to X, make sure I have load example tile tool off, and I'm now just going to click create new tile tool. So this is going to process and it's going to generate a new plane of geometry. And now I can start applying nano meshes to this. So I need to make sure I have that brush selected, that I stored that actual uh, insert mesh object and convert it to a nano mesh and stored it in the brush. So I'm just going here and select that there. Now if I hold spacebar, I want to make sure I have insert nano mesh selected and I want the target to be a single poly. So now if I come across this plane object here and simply click and drag, it's going to draw that nano mesh out along the surface poly. So I'm going to undo that quick. Now I want to make a tiling nylon texture. So I want to come through and start giving some of these squares a little offset here and apply different nano meshes to different areas. So to do this, I'm first going to hover over a poly and I'm going to hold Alt and then click and this is going to assign a temporary poly group to that actual poly. So I'm just going to come through and generate a offset type of pattern like so. And now that I have this white poly group or this temporary poly group assigned to these spaces, if I come across one of these and with the insert nano mesh of poly selected, hold space over, and the target set to single poly, if I click on any of these white squares here, it's going to apply that insert nano mesh across all those white squares. So you can see I have this kind of applied now to those different areas. Now if I come over here and open up the nano mesh tab here, you can see that the nano mesh is now living over here now. So I applied it to the mesh and then I can come over here and actually change the modifiers of that actual nano mesh. Well, this is looking a little bit sparse, right? And if I'm making a nylon texture, I'm going to have other pieces of kind of string going in other ways to make almost like a weave type pattern. So I'm going to come through and do the same process I just did on those, but now to opposite squares. So I'm going to come to this one, hold Alt and click, Alt click, Alt click, Alt click, Alt click, and Alt click. Just do that all the way down. And now I'm going to apply that insert nano mesh again, and just click and drag out, and then just rotate it so it actually embeds like that, right? So now you can see this is kind of generating that nice weave pattern. So I'm just continue this a little bit more. Now I could have gone through and did all the horizontals and all the verticals, but I actually want to apply different effects to each one of those. Um, so I don't want them all linked together. So here's another set of that alt temporary poly group. I'm going to click and drag on that, apply another anno mesh to there. So now I have this effect. And now I need to get those last squares just coming through and holding alt and clicking. And then applying that nano mesh there and rotating it. So it ends up doing that. So now you can see this is already looking like a nylon weave. And you can see how fast that creation process actually was. So now if I come over here to this nano mesh uh, tab over here, you can see that every single time I applied another nano mesh to there, an index was created over here. So I have three indexes, which consists of four different nano meshes. So if I scroll to index zero, and now I just change the size, you can see that that's that one. That's how that's affecting it there. If I go to index 1 and change the size, you can see it's that set. Then index 2 is this set. And index 3 is this set. So now that I have all these sets being different, I can actually come through and add variation to this to make sure it doesn't look as repeated as it does right now. So the first thing in order to get this tile correctly, I need to make sure I turn off this RAND array button down here. So I'm going to come over here and just click that. And that's going to allow the Nano Tile Texture Tool to generate a seamless tiling texture when I start using these variation sliders over here or random distribution. If you have all these sliders set to zero and no random distribution or random seeding selected, you can actually just leave that on. 
but if you're going to use random distribution or any of these random variation sliders over here, you need to make sure you have that rand array turned off. So now I'm going to go back to index 0 here, and I just want to come through and I want to change the rotation on this a little bit, to just apply a little bit of random rotation so it's not constant all the way through. So I'm going to come and first find out which axis I want to manipulate, and it's going to be the z-axis, and I just want to put in a number value, so something low like 5. So now all those nanomeshes there are offset in that 5 degrees. Well, I don't want them all offset the same way. So I'm going to come over here to this variation option here, and I'm going to just change the slider a little bit, and now you can see I'm going to be able to get a random variation applied to those as well. So this is going to allow me to randomize that actual variation. So this string doesn't look like this string, and this string doesn't look like that string. So really nice little effect there. Now I'm just going to duplicate that process across the other indexes as well. So this is this index. And if you want to isolate uh, one of these as well, so you can just kind of see it in a more clearly defined way, you just hit hide others. It'll just show you the one you're manipulating. So this one right there is the one I'm manipulating. Now I'm going to find the same thing with the rotation. So 90 degrees was basically vertical, so I'm going to set something like 95, and then just offset this variation here to apply a little bit more randomness to it. So I have an effect like this. I'm going to go to index 2 and do the same kind of thing, find the rotation value, and set it to say 5, and then randomize that just a tad bit, too much. You can type these values in too if you don't want to slot them. And then index 3, random value, say 95 again, and then offset this a little bit. It's going to be too much, let's do 85, and then randomize it a little bit. negative three. There we go. So now I have this generated on the mesh here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just turn off show placement, so I'm just left with this nice kind of tiling weave pattern. So now that you have this done, I can come through and you know, continue to change variables on this. If I want to adjust the width on some of them, the height, I can put random values across all of them, and just make this weave look a little bit less computer generated and more natural. But now that I have this done, I just need to get this out to an actual texture. So this is where the other options in the nano tile textures will come in handy. So I can come down here and now select what size resolution map I want. Make sure I have 1024 selected, which is going to generate a 1K map. So 1024 this way and 1024 that way. Next I can come through and decide what passes I want to actually process here. So I'm just going to go through and turn all these guys on. Um, AO will give me an AO pass. Height will give me the actual alpha height depth pass. BPR will render this with BPR. Albedo will give me color, if I have any colorized information on this model. Preview will give you just what you see on the screen here. Normal map will generate a normal. Bump map will use the color bump, basically using this material here, the bump map viewer material, and applying that to your model and then grabbing that. And then polygroup ID will look at the actual polygrouping you have on these insert mesh, nano mesh brushes you created, and then grab that out as well. Um, you also have the options down here for auto export and flip map. The auto export one will allow you to take all these maps and process them right to the directory, and then you'll just allow you to speed up your workflow and just dump these maps out as fast as possible. I'm going to turn this off right now because I'm just doing the demo in the side of ZBrush here. So after you have these options selected, all you have to do now is click this Create Seamless Maps button and then sit back and the maps will process. If you select something heavy like an 8K map or a 4K map, it may take a little while to process, so just kind of click the button, go get some coffee. But if you do something like 1024, it's pretty quick, so I'm going to come over here and just click this and start generating those maps. So when it's done, you'll get this little message that pops up, just telling you that the seamless tiling uh, map creation is finished and it'll tell you where the files were created. So if you had this auto export on, it would have been saved on your computer, and I had it off, so it just saved them in the texture and alpha palettes. So now if I come up to the texture tab here, you can see I have all these maps that were created here, and I can now export these out manually. So you can see it's gone through and generated seamless maps with all those passes you had selected. So here is the AO pass right here of that weave, so it looks pretty good. So now you can use this map on your models inside of ZBrush as a tiling texture, or export it out to another application. So that's a quick primer on how to use the actual nano tile textures to create a simple nylon uh, type texture that you can then use on your meshes inside of ZBrush or export them out to other applications. Hope that helps and happy ZBrushing!